Welcome to this DataBits production. Today, we will show you how to operate your Eki 16mm motion picture projector. If you've never bought an Eki 16mm projector before, perhaps the time is now. There's a reason for owning a 16mm projector. Number one, it can provide you with hours of fantastic entertainment from cheesy and campy films from the 60s, 50s, and 70s. Also, most females love 16mm projectors, and to own one would mean to have any girl that you could possibly want. No, you don't need a sports car to impress the ladies. You need an Eki RT0 16mm projector. Other things that are good for the 16mm projection system are backyard barbecues where you can project your image on a screen outside. So enjoy the outdoors as well as showing a movie outside. It's a fun experience. And while your neighbors are using one of those high definition video projectors, you'll have something even more exciting. You'll have nostalgia as well as a superior picture quality that can only come from the RT0 Eki 16mm projector. Now the reason for this film is to show you how to operate your Eki. The reason is, if you get outside and let's say you have a date and you're showing your film outside in the backyard to that girl you're trying to impress. If you don't know how to operate one of these Eki projectors, you can look like an idiot and the girl will likely leave and she will never talk to you again. So it's important to understand the operation features of the Eki and how to gracefully project your cheesy film from the 1970s to impress her. First of all, you'll need an Eki RT0 projector. You can find one at a thrift store, an antique mall, or on eBay for a reasonable price. The next thing you'll need is a take-up reel, and again, one of those cheesy films we discussed earlier. Here's a picture of one. This one is called Sleepy Heads, and teaches little children the importance of sleeping for good health. You'll also need a spare projection bulb. This particular model uses an ELC projection bulb. You don't want to be caught in your outdoor projection theater with a burnt out bulb. That would be the end of the performance. And again, the ladies would leave. So be prepared. Have an extra ELC bulb ready to go. First, let's show you the location of the ELC projection bulb in case you have to replace it. Grab the outer cover right here and pull down. Once the cover has been removed, you'll see that the projection bulb is housed inside of this housing. It's easy to remove and replace. The other bulb that you might have to replace at some point, but not very likely, is the exciter lamp. Grab a hold of this plastic housing as you see here and pull out. Inside you'll see the exciter bulb. The exciter bulb is located right there, but it's too dark for you to see because my lighting is awful. Just take my word for it. It's there. After you check the exciter bulb, Put the housing back on and then close the outer housing. Once you unpack your Eki, you'll need to pull up these side arms until they click. There's two of them. One is the supply, one is the take up. This one is the take up. This one is the supply. You're going to put your take up reel on the take up spindle. This would be your empty reel. It goes on this spindle. Once you place it on the spindle, there's a lock. 
pull the lock down so that your reel doesn't fall off and embarrass you in mid-movie. Next, place your cheesy 70s film on the, on the supply spindle. And lock it into place. You'll see here that there's a way that the film should hang down. Your film should not hang down this way. Your film should hang down this way with the tail curling up and to the left. Kind of reminds you of a paper, paper, um, toilet paper roll, doesn't it? There's a right way and a wrong way to hang a toilet paper roll. The same way with a 16 millimeter film. The next step is to thread the film into the projector. And you'll do that by inserting the film into a slot right here on top of the projector. In fact, you'll see an image indicating the direction of the film. The first thing you'll need to do is switch it into load mode. You'll do that by pushing this lever located next to this light inward until it locks. The next thing you'll need to do is trim the end of the film so that it has a nice pointy end on it. You do that with this small splicer that's located right here on the base of the projector. Load your film into the slot and push down so that it clips the end off, making a nice, even, squarish, roundish, shapish thingish, like you see here. The next thing to do is to look at the operations or the, um, the controls of this unit. You have some basic functions. You can project reverse. You can project with light in reverse. You can run forward and you can run light forward. Here is your sound system. Once you turn it on, you'll see that the exciter lamp bulb comes on just above the sound wheel. There it is off. There it is on. Next, we're going to load the film into the projector by switching the projector into forward mode. Once you do this, you'll see the take-up spindle begin turning, and you'll hear air or a fan coming from the projector itself. Next, load the film into the slot just above where it says Rewind Operate. The film will load through the system and come back out the back side. Once you see the film come out the back side, Give it a tug, and your auto load lock will unlock. Next, take the film and load it into the small slot located on the take-up spindle. You'll see it on the side. Insert the film into the slot, until you see it appear in the hole. Then turn your reel so that the film tightens. If you do it too much and too soon, your film won't lock into the hole and the take-up reel will just spin f furiously. Now you're ready to project your film. But before we do, we should probably get the film to a place where it's viewable and usually it's going to be at the end of a countdown. You'll see the numbers appearing on the film itself. A good projectionist will cue his film so that it's ready to go and doesn't show the numbers counting down. So let's do that now. Okay, in our case, we don't have the countdown on this particular film, so we were ready to go anyway. So now we want to run the film back so that it doesn't start before the music actually started. There we go. That's a good starting point right there. Now you're ready to show your film. 
Let me show you a couple other things you'll need to do to tweak the performance of your film. First of all would be the focus. Your focus knob is here. By moving it left or right, you're going to get a more detailed focus on your screen. This will come out the projection lens here, or it adjusts it there. The next thing you'll need to do is check the framing of your film. You don't want the frame before the film or the frame after the viewing film showing. It's kind of like walking around with your underwear hanging out the back of your pants. Nobody wants to do that. So let me show you what that does. First I'll show you the frame. So there's framing. You saw how the frame moved up and down as I moved this lever here up and down. The next thing you don't want to do is hit this lever here. This is a pause control, but it's completely worthless. By pushing this pause control down, it will pause your movie in the middle of it. But if you leave it there too long, the heat from the projection lamp will burn a hole in your movie, ruining it. A feature I would call the self-destruct feature. Don't use the self-destruct feature while showing your movies. Just leave this lever where it is. If you have trouble with your film, it's possible that it may have missing sprocket holes. If so, there's a built-in mechanism that attempts to compensate for missing sprocket holes. It's this lever right here. As the film is playing and the film is missing sprocket holes, this will turn and try to pull the film down so that it doesn't get stuck and drag across the gate here. If your film has too many missing sprocket holes, you may want to just throw it in the trash and get another film. That would be my recommendation. Occasionally you may need to blow out your film projector if there is dust or constant hairs being shown in your frame. If that's the case, pull this focus thing out towards you. Get some canned air and spray inside here where the film is actually running through. This will remove hair and other objects that may be showing, like an old piece of bacon or perhaps some unchewed food that you spit out. Once completed, push the lens back in and it will lock into place. At the end of the film, you will need to rewind it. And I, of course, can't display that to you because my film is still at the beginning. But I'll show you the motions. To rewind the film, you're actually going to flip this gauge up like that. And you're going to put the film projector in forward. Notice right here it says forward or rewind. Even though you go forward one, you're in rewind if this lever is leaned to the right. Like that. Now we're in rewind mode. There are some controls on the front that can enhance your sound experience. For example, you have a volume control, a treble control, and a bass control. My bass control knob is broke off, but hopefully yours isn't. You can control the sound and make it sound very cool by adjusting these controls during playback. You also have a built-in microphone. You can plug a microphone in here and make announcements to your audience during the production. This pretty much shows you how to use your Iki film projector. We hope that you'll have many fun experiences and you'll pick up some great dates while playing films in your backyard. If you don't have a girlfriend or a significant other, showing films in your backyard should attract neighbors who will become very interested in your film playback process. Although we have stated these uh, romantic involvements, this EQ projector does not guarantee any romantic involvements with others. It's just a suggestion. Also, this EQ projector is not intended to cure or diagnose or treat any diseases. We thank you for watching this film and we hope you enjoy all of the Data Bits videos in our library right here on YouTube. Have a wonderful day!
and a wonderful film watching experience. Goodbye.